Okay, everybody, welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Pop Goes the Zebra. With me today is Adam Galt and Lead Officer Jesse Fields. How are you doing, Lead Officer Jesse Fields? Are you playing? Just getting, uh, just getting into work to see uh, ah, what my night's going to look like. I wish. I wish. I actually don't have to start on my sheet for another hour, so oh, there we I got go. a little bit of time. Yeah, I got a little bit of time. He's got a run sheet. Even even away from the office, he's got a run sheet, folks. Who's going over in the main? <laughs> uh, hopefully I am. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know, dude. We may have to be over there sleep. and you get to get out of there. <laughs> I know. That's that's it's always the best. Like work curtain jerk and you get out. There yep. you go. There you go. Uh, obviously, we are joined today by Mr. Adam Galt, GCW referee uh, extraordinaire. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. As uh, Before we started, I did mention it's been a day, so it's been a little stressful, but uh, overall, I have no complaints, and I was looking forward to this uh, all day. Um, and and uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. And thank you guys for having me and inviting me, and uh, I appreciate it. So. Oh man, it's 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 awesome to to chew the fat with a uh, fellow zebras. Uh, you've had yourself quite a career. Uh, how long have you been working? So I started kind of like on a casual way in like 2013, late 2013, 2014. But I was uh, I was still coaching high school wrestling at the time, and it's not that I, I always took it seriously when I was refing, but it it wasn't that I kind of realized I could what I could do with it and start taking it um, more as like, Hey, this could be a career. Or this could be, you know, I can really go some places with this until 2017. So although I was refing on an awful lot, those other years, 2017, the spring of 2017 is really when it was like, all right, we're going, going full tilt here. So. Ah, I feel you there. Um, I had been working for about five or six years uh, and uh I had a, a break in my career. And before that break, I had no inkling that I was ever going to work anywhere outside of the town of Maryville, Indiana, and any more than once a month. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough that I'm no longer just working in Maryville, Indiana and working only once a month. Yeah. So I, I feel you. Yeah, it was similar in that way because I started old time wrestling in Williamstown, New Jersey, which is like 45 minutes away from Philadelphia which is now uh, Matt Tremont's um, H2O, same location. But when uh, we had it before with Jim Molino, who was ECW original referee. Um, and so that was all I worked. I just worked there. Uh, and it was usually, they had Saturday shows, student shows at 2 p.m. And they had one night show a month. And uh, so I did that on and off for, you know, that three to four year period. Uh, but that really is what I think helped me, you know, learn and, and, and quickly uh, become the ref I could be and then 2017 started going to outside places and then it just kind of you know been very fortunate um, since then you remember what it felt like when you started going to those outside places and like before you, you, you thought you kind of had a grasp on how things go and then you go somewhere else and you kind of have that Dorothy from Wizard of Oz yeah. Dorothy from Wizard of Oz <laughs> moment <laughs> we're live pal yeah. where you're just like oh we're not in Kansas anymore <laughs> yes. Um, and I will I'll actually say it in a way that sometimes I think, especially for younger wrestlers, you sometimes take your home for granted. Um, and I think I started to learn quickly uh, going to other places that I think sometimes we took OTW for granted because where it didn't have the highest production value or buzz per se, um, you always knew what you were doing uh, from bell to bell. Quality was there. Uh, you came in, there was a card, it was organized. He had times, everything he needed to know. Uh, finishes were given. It was a little strict in that way. Um, there was a meeting beforehand, meeting afterwards, you know, very tight, very organized. And then um, most of my experience is now, fortunately, with where I am, that's similar to that. But, you know, when you're kind of going here, going there, going wherever, um, that's not what you, <laughs> you always experience um, on the independence. So you kind of recognize the good, the bad, the, the, you know, in the, in the middle um, so I think you kind of take that for sometimes you realize, oh man, that was, you know, as much as you couldn't wait to get out of your home place so you can start working in front of more people or working for that, that comp company with a lot of buzz, you always kind of think, oh, 
there's some of those things that you you know you always could count on in your uh, in your home place. So, how, so uh, how did you get involved with uh, professional wrestling? Um, wh what was that like? So I've I've always been a fan um, since well, I shouldn't say always. I've been a fan since ten eight, when I was ten years old was when I kind of like uh, it was actually the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania fifteen. Because WrestleMania 15 was in Philadelphia. Yes, sir. And I had grown up always liking the idea of wrestling. And my uh, older cousins were like big brothers to me. And they anything they liked, I liked. So from, you know, superheroes to, to, to wrestling and everything in between, you know, I idolized them. So I knew like, you know, 96 to 99, like, you know, NWO was cool and ECW was cool. I didn't know any of it. I was six years old to nine years old. Like I didn't understand the grasp of it, but I was like, oh yeah, wrestling's cool. But I remember um I've told this story a few times, but the uh the Monday after WrestleMania 15, my classmate came in and he had gone to it and he's just raving about how you know great WrestleMania was and all this. And I'm like, I'm like, that does sound pretty cool. So that night I tuned into Monday Night Raw and Ministry of Darkness was like big at the time and whatever. And it's you know, um you know, uh, Austin rocks, obviously 15. So, I mean, yep. you're, you're right in the heat of things. And I watched that episode and then never looked back. <laughs> it has been, you know, you're just like obsessed since. Um, and so kind of to fast forward, I always, so then I ring of honor was kind of my delving to the independence. And I really like my teenage years, very much into that. You start branching out of other places. And then I always thought I was going to be a wrestler, but then, you know, I, I, you go to college, you, you know what you want to have your backup plan and you just kind of get caught up in those other things. So I went my way and kind of went away from the idea of being a pro wrestler training or whatever. Then when I graduated from college in 2012, uh, my best friend was training to be a pro or was a pro wrestler at that point had trained was kind of running things at OTW along with Jim. And then um, he was kind of like, Hey, why don't you come in and try to do something? I said, I wanted to do something. He's like, you should be a wrestler. I'm like, ah, I think we're okay uh, at this point. So I tried like interviewing, I tried commentary and then eventually started as a ref. And it just kind of, like I said, I just started kind of training to be a ref and doing those other things. And then it stuck, you know, it stuck. One thing led to another. So that was kind of, kind of how it all, all shaped out. Do you remember your first match? I don't, sadly, I don't. I, I, I tell every young ref or, or, or wrestler for that matter, track your matches, write them down. Now that we have the technology that we have on your phone, I know Clemens always says use the, the notes app. Um, there's really no excuse not to, to track your matches. So, and make sure you do. Cause I, I, I couldn't tell you a lot of the, my first few matches. I remember glimpses here, but it kills me to not know exactly, you know, my first matches. By the time I got the advice to um, to start keeping track of your matches, we're we're well into it. I you know, so like I found it was easier uh, to just write down the name of every person you've ever worked with. Yeah, I can't tell you every match I've had. I can tell you whether I've worked with someone or not. Gotcha. Which. Yeah. It's it's kind of a cheap way out of that, but like at the point when I found out, you know, hey, that's a cool thing to do. We were we were well past where I could remember every single match I'd ever had, you know. But like, yeah. Um. So let's fast forward a little bit. Um. When did you get hooked up with uh with places like GCW and and really start getting out there and and uh, how did that process work? So, uh, yeah, it's just, I, I think geographically, I'm very fortunate being in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, um, if you're in the East Coast and in a solid area, of, you know, with Philly, we're, we're two hours from New York. There's a lot going on in our area. You know, all of Jersey right next door, whether it's going on up near the city with New York, uh, in North Jersey, or right over the bridge in South Jersey. And Baltimore, only, you know, an hour and a half, hour and a half two hours away. So, like, there's just a lot of opportunities. So if you're a solid ref and you're networking, you know, and enough people can vouch for you, things started to come together and that's kind of how it happened. Um, Chris Levin was, it was definitely a big help um, in the area. Yeah. So he, uh, you know, he had worked OTW a few times. We had met a few times. Um, but the one time he, uh, 
he had a uh, MLW was uh, doing a taping in Queens mm. and uh, they had needed refs and he had uh, recommended me. And then I was able to work there October, 2018. So that was to be working that in television, um, you know, pretty, pretty quickly, like a year and a half when I was really starting to take things more seriously and going to more outside places was, was very, uh, very cool, very humbling, very helpful. And then it's a cool story how GCW turned out. Um, it's always a good one as well. It was, uh, I had recognized the, the buzz they were getting, obviously, and uh, kind of keeping tabs on where they were. Um, and it, they were in Philly on a Thursday night uh, in June of 2019. And I had um, I'd known about the show, but I was working uh, my shoot job, kind of got, you know, it's a Thursday, preoccupied my day. And I said, oh, I'm going to go to the gym after, after work today. So I'm getting changed in the gym. And Chris calls me and he goes, hey, are you available for a show? And I said, uh, and then, I, then it clicked. I'm like, oh, GCW. I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, you know, where is it and whatever. And sure enough, it was only three blocks from my gym. It was actually my shoot jobs here, my gym's here, and GCW <laughs> the right in the middle. Now, this is where I say always have your gear on you. Like, have a little bit of gear. So, and I actually do usually do that, but it was a summertime, and for whatever reason, I didn't have I didn't have it on me. But fortunately, I lived ten minutes away, so I jumped home, grabbed my stuff, came right back. I mean, but knowing it was like right there was kind of funny. It's like, man, you had to go run home, whatever. But I got myself together, was there with time to spare. And um, yeah, Chris and I refed uh, that GCW show, me and him. I I think Bryce was on vacation. Ryan T was working because it was a Thursday. And then Chris realized, oh, I have to Iron Man this. It's like, wait, Adam's got to be around. So absolutely then, not. No Iron yeah, Man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Iron Man uh, any show, let alone GCW, is a whole lot. So, so I was able to work that show, and then kind of just you know stuck around. And now, uh, you know, two years later, it's been it's been awesome. It's been a really great ride, and, and you know, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Fun is the word association with with GCW. It's like, oh, that was the fun right now. So when you yeah. met. So when you met Chris, uh, was he uh, a small still or was he up to a medium? <laughs> uh, let's see. When we met, he was probably definitely still a small. Oh, a definitely. Small small. Ago. <laughs> he probably doesn't remember the first time we met, but it was a long time ago. Before. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I will never not take a pot shot at that. So freaking What's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's up so, in his medium days now. So, he, he, uh, well, you know, you can't be, you can't have your kid body forever. You do get, get to bulk up a little bit, a little you bit. Know, as, as, as you go along. So <laughs> how did you meet our illustrious lead officer here? Um, who's not paying attention. Looks like his microphone is off. How, how did you bump into this chucklehead? So yeah, it looks like he's definitely consulting with someone right now. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, so Jesse, um, uh, I'll have a number three. <laughs> Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, you, you know someone's totally bothering him right now. Though, that way, yeah, hopefully, he has us on. Like he's just. Oh God! Great. I hope we're coming through the speakers. Yeah, right. Be great. Listen, he's in the middle of an interview, so we're gonna need you to just to to, to go away for a little bit. So, go but on. Jesse, um, <laughs> similar to you, Jeremy, because this is actually our first time meeting technically, not in person. But um, pleasure to meet you. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, give me that fist bump through the screen there. The um, we, you know, I'd always notice Jesse on online, and you know, you kind of just have that mutual respect for each other, seeing where you are as referees. And um, so when we actually met in the collective 2020 remix. Well, that wasn't the remix. No, that was uh, the was one in it, October. Yeah, the, the one, one in Indianapolis. Yes, yes the that's, one in Indianapolis that's in October, where I officially met him. Yes, yes. And that's when I officially met Jesse as well. That was like a converging of a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I met I met Perch that weekend. I Dan met Perch. Uh, yeah, I watched Perch Perch's uh, episode this week to, to prepare because I mean he's the best. So I love Perch. Um, yeah, Perch is awesome. Uh really, really awesome. So and it's funny, Jeremy. Like, I'll have to say this. I think probably this may I might get this too, just given like I've seen your pictures before on social media and then like so I think I we were maybe in the same room, obviously, for Indianapolis, but not on any shows so our passing across. But I always thought you were like a little intimidating. So, and then when I, not a bad way, not in a bad way, was just like the, the you know the way you look in this. And then I watched a few episodes of, of this. 
Uh, pop, yeah, exactly. Especially the clean shaven, which my army base right now. <laughs> um, and I watched a few episodes of the podcast, and I was like, Jeremy's everything I didn't think he was. <laughs> like, oh like, no, I, I just, he's you know, and like I describe myself as a walking, talking cartoon character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think a lot of people probably seen that probably would feel the same way about me a little bit because it's just a matter of like where you are and chopping things up. When people really get to know me a little bit more, they're like. Oh, there's there's a lot more you're you're maybe a lot more fun than i realized I'm like yeah you know or i don't even say fun because i'm good in small doses <laughs> yeah yeah that kind of way but and it was funny i just think it was mainly just from the photos you know you get those mean mug and ref photos and i'm just like and the way in seeing you work and like which is how it should be call right down the line and i'm like no it's it's funny so it's just funny how like you get like a little impression from just a photo simply but so that was good but i'm, I'm really excited to to uh be on this call and then like you said next uh next month all of us working together as well yeah that's gonna be fun everybody kind of getting together for the yeah. gcw blp three cup stuff yeah. whatever the fuck else it's called yeah. weekend yeah. um good lord there's gonna <laughs> 17 be 17 like, shows in four days you know whatever it may be i think i've got two and i'm my happy ass is going yeah. home i'm only doing one <laughs> i'm going home <laughs> yep I got if, one, but I'm ha- I'm hanging out for the rest of them. So if I were in my oh, early to mid twenties, I would be I would have been trying my damnedest to get on like every one of those shows. But like I've gotten old, so I'm just like I've only got two. Great, yes, you know, not that I don't want to work, but it's just like you know, yeah. Your pillow is like the number yeah. one thing in your life after a certain point. Like that is your mistress. That is the thing that beckons to you the most. Come be with me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Especially if it's in your own bed, which is it, you're, you're fortunate enough to do. The yeah. army taught me that above all else, there is nothing like putting your head on your own pillow in your own bed. Yeah. You yep. appreciate that beyond everything else is your own pillow. Yeah. And like I said, being geographically lucky, a lot of times I get to get home from my, you know, my bookings or maybe it's like being able to be home, you know, in, in, in a couple hours and know you're going to sleep in your own bed is like, is, you know, it's, it's the best. So yeah, I, I, things. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I travel as much as, as Jesse here. He's going multiple States. You know, uh, Jesse's definitely traveled more than I have too. Oh yeah. Definitely. Longer trips and I, you know. that's just not in me to do ever. Like, I'll, if it's yeah, like something the, like the wallet, oh, the I'll wallet get, doesn't yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. If it's like I have a five months head up, I can heads up, I can go do. Okay, that's one thing I can. I, but like, it's like I couldn't do like you know I'm in the in Northwest Indiana. I couldn't do you know Tennessee it to uh, West Virginia to to New York all in the span of a month. Like that, I just can't do that right now. Yeah. Just you know as jesse says the wallet has a lot to do with that there that's just you know yeah i'm actually planning a little uh a little trip i'm going to be doing gcw in vegas in a couple weeks which i kind of good for you coordinated with my vacation and then like that on top of of you know the uh labor day weekend stuff but then you yeah you look at the um this week was like, oh, let's make sure we eat because uh, we have enough money to eat. Uh, so because we just made, you know, make Mama it noodle is a, is a yeah. hell of a thing, man. Yeah, like, it'll, it'll, it'll get you time. by, you know. Yeah. Have you ever been to Vegas? I have actually with my family, uh, it was like maybe 2013. Um, so but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it in, in a different uh, capacity. It'll be a lot of fun, so. I, I did it one player a uh, few years back. I I hopped on a plane and went and did a Sammy Callahan seminar oh, up nice. there for FSW. Yep. Landed, it was like a Saturday, you know, go out there for Saturday, do the thing, maybe do the show, wake up, fly home Sunday morning. Gotcha. So the rib on that was, is uh through just like the hectic rush of getting everything like done and getting a ticket and all that stuff i thought i'd click on a return flight for sunday my flight left uh about 9 15 saturday night while i was at the show because apparently i had clicked saturday saturday <laughs> So, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to figure out a way to get home from from Las Vegas Sunday morning on the spot. You know that was fun. Yeah. Oof. And things like things like that is why I double checked my like flight uh, or uh, itinerary like 
over and over and over again to make sure uh, we weren't having a situation like that. What did you end up doing? Would you, I mean, you just had to obviously found another flight. Back, but oh, I I, pay, I paid her back. Uh, my it, my girlfriend spotted me on that one because I called her from like from like the airport in Las Vegas, and I'm looking at the one like, oh, Southwest has a flight leaving like an hour. You help me yeah. out here because I put all my money into going on this trip, and of course, yeah. when I wasn't at the show, uh, I'm in Las Vegas. You know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah vegas got me a couple of different ways you know yeah i'd still go back in a heartbeat like that was i've nice. never been it's yeah. definitely a, it is a two-player or more type of town going yeah. on well, your like, own i would not recommend it. i because i saw the loop for gcw going to vegas and i was like i kind of thought about asking asking to be on that one but i'm like do i really want to send myself out to vegas for a couple days oh like, that I'm is an balanced? elevated dry heat that is that is <laughs> fun Walk in that strip, you're you're a little bit higher than normal uh, yeah. in terms of sea level, and it's a dry heat. Oof! And I think I was out there in like, I'm wanting to say like late July, early August. So oh, like it was, yeah. It's gonna be hot in a couple, <laughs> I mean, in a couple of weeks. I mean, but uh, it'll be fun. I'm not a gambler, but I like you know everything else that it presents in terms of just having a good time. And, you know, it'll be fun. Yeah. The uh, the water fountain show at the Bellagio. I recommend that. Okay. Excellent. Yes, Excellent. definitely worth checking out. Okay, so uh, what do you got coming up? What kind of what where can we uh, spot you show wise? Yeah. So um, the uh, the next thing actually will be uh, due to some other busy things. GCW in Vegas will be my next show, which is kind of crazy. Um, and uh, that's so that's the twentieth of August um don't have much that next weekend and then we're right into the labor day weekend with uh all the festivities of um gcw in chicago and detroit uh so i'm really excited i've been to chicago uh, for my best friend's bachelor party two years ago but i've never worked in chicago so i love chicago for my one experience that i did have there um and i can't wait to work there as uh, as mr excited. clemens has found out uh you need to do portillo's Yes, yes, that's that's on. The yes, he, like every time he's he comes up here for work, he's like, "Can we get Portillos? Can we get Portillos?" Yeah. So I'm just like, "Yeah, <laughs> man, we get Portillos." And the rib is, we never get Portillos because we're at the show so late. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that will that will you know hold you back there. And then I've never uh, I've never been to Detroit or worked Detroit, so that'll be exciting. And then after that, when we come back um, September. Let's see about late September. I have a few things, I think, but I'm a little slower. But I know that uh, GCW will be back in Atlantic City the second weekend of October. Um, hopefully, we'll be at MLW the first weekend of October in Philly. Uh, oh, New York. Uh, GCW is doing New York at the end of September, the 23rd, 24th. So there's, uh, yeah, it should be all of that. Very excited. You might want to inquire about November for MLW. They just left town here. Uh, they just saw it earlier today. They're they're yeah. going to be uh, out in uh, Philadelphia now for the November sixth show. Oh, uh, really? I wonder if they're doing October and November then. But uh, I know all I know is, is they announced that they were they were uh, pulling up the tent in uh, in Chicago, which I was actually waiting to hear back on that. Yeah. Which now I know why I didn't hear back on that. You know. Yeah. Because I'd actually sent the email like on Monday, and yeah. and it was weird because usually I get an email like the next day, like we're not booking refs that late or that yeah. that far out, you know, acquire yeah. again later type of thing. I didn't get anything. I was like, huh. Yeah. Then that comes across. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the updated location yet. I just saw they pulled it, but I did three hundred. All right. Well, yeah, they're keeping running there. Okay. The so. arena. That's helpful. Thank you. <laughs> hey, there you go. I'm hooking a uh, hooking a zebra up. You know. <laughs> yes. Yes. And more of that again. Um, there you go. Yeah. So 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 yeah. It'll be, it'll be pretty busy fall. I'm excited. Very much looking forward to it. So. Uh, oh man. So getting getting back to the uh, the craft of uh, of uh, professional refereeing, um, one of my favorite questions that I do like to ask when I have have a referee on here. Uh, that's been that's got some time uh, in the stripes. Uh, what was your first aha moment? Yeah, um, it's such it's that's a tough one because aha moments are so like it, I feel like they happen even when you have a lot of experience. There's still a lot to them that you keep learning. Um, man, I should have been a little more prepared. That's a tough one. <laughs> 
Um, I, I think uh, one of the, actually I, I, this is this is I think one that sticks out a lot for me and kind of uh, definitely follows up what I talked about earlier. So old time wrestling, right? So OTW, so very much the referees, the enforcer, and the enforcer of the rules. So I was always pretty intense with you know taught to really be the authority figure and kind of like really stick up for yourself a lot of those ways. And when you're doing a small student show, that is a really good route to go, helping younger talent and and whatnot. But I remember realizing through various seminars and just as you're watching more and doing more, that crescendo, like that build, like, for instance, I know that if I watched some of my matches for my first few years and the guys would lock up, go to the corner, I'd probably start counting right away, furiously and back, you know, realizing that you're that part of that build and that, that movement of, all right, especially if there's no hot issue, right? This is just a competitive one-on-one exhibition match. You're not going to count right away when they go into the corner, you're going to feel it out. All right, guys, you might not, you might not count at all, you know? Yeah. All right. We're good. We're good. And then you can, you can feel off that build off that. And then, you're going with the, the you know, match. And then maybe if it's, you know, 10 minutes into that match and they've been beating you know, the hell out of each other um, and it seems like it's a little more contentious, then we're going to start counting a little bit more because it's built to that. Um, I remember that being a pretty big aha moment for me, given the style of, of my refereeing, like that was a big change of things. And then when you go from like rules, rules, rules to like GCW, that's also a big interpretation, like, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, it, and, and so that's, that's always, and that's, it's funny. We, I've been able to now two years there, like there's the rules that aren't the rules. Like it's, it, and it, it kind of works, you know, it's, it's not my favorite personally, but Hey, that's not up to me. And, and so we gotta, we gotta ride it out and um, we make it work. And it's uh you know, there's there's certain matches where the rules are understood to be more traditional, and then there's the ones where we're doing everything and anything, and there's ones that, that tip the balance of it. So, you know. I still don't know what the real rules for GCW are. <laughs> oh, it's, it's uh, I kind of approach it the way uh, I approached um, House of Hardcore. But when I first asked Tommy Dreamer what he wanted, he's like, just old school ECW. I was like, oh, yeah. okay. So pretty much referee's discretion. So if you don't do anything, you're not really going to be at fault. Yep. You know, just make sure somebody doesn't get killed. I yep. think it's pretty much the one rule. Don't and referee yeah. discretion is always, that's the way to go. And then also, I, I, I like this one, and, and I've heard this from even like deathmatch guys that will say, I want you to still encourage us not to break the rules. Like, like you know you can't disqualify us, per se, um, but like, hey, think about this. Like, do you really want to do something like this? Do we really have to do this? You know, hey, like, come on. And I, so, you know, even in, so that's always a good way of being, try to be the voice of reason. Come on, man. You don't got to do that. Come on. No. This is too far. We don't need to bring come the on. door. We don't need to bring in the chair. We don't, and then, yeah. and, and some of the more extreme cases, we don't need to uh, have the pizza cutter or whatever else may be. So I've got uh, till five. Doesn't yeah. mean you got to use it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, and those, those, so that was definitely to answer your question, definitely a big aha moment um, was just that you have to recognize, yes, you're this enforcer. Yes. You can't, you know, let your, you know, you'd be walked all over, but you can't go zero to a hundred or even zero to 75, like right away and understand, understand the business that needs to be done. Right. Like that's what the work, you know, the workers have to understand what the business needs to be done, but you guys do too. We do. Um, you know, the, the referee does. And uh, because for that same reason, you know, whether it's, you know, obviously if it's a heated blood feud, they're probably not locking up anyways, but you're going to maybe go to that count right away. Um, or if they're two guys that have a little bit of history or girls who have a little bit of history, um, you got to, you got to work that out. So, so that, that's, that's a big one. That's a big one. What, uh, what was the best bit of advice that someone ever gave you uh, in, in the business? Uh I think um, a lot of it's just with a matter of being careful what you say. Uh, and that was a big eye opener for me because I think sometimes early on, you, you try to be very dramatic in, in what you need to say. Like uh, uh, Todd Sinclair taught me a really great thing when I did a Ring of Honor seminar camp. Um, I said, I'm not going to tell you again to not do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he pulled his eyes like, 
well, what happens when he does do it again and it's not the finish and you didn't disqualify him? You know, um, so being very careful with your words of saying, you know, listen, I'm not going to tell you again or whatever, you know, um, and, and that kind of made me think, wow, like, you know, again, I think to the point where I was just mentioning earlier, you have this idea of, of I'm the enforcer sort of, and recognizing you have to walk that line and work, work, work with them. So being careful what you're saying there and then also not getting too caught up when you're saying, I know I, I said, is there words that you know, other seminars that I've asked to, to Brewer or, or some other likes of, of the NXT WWE guys, is there words they avoid or don't like to hear? No, just, you know, try to change it up, but don't overthink it at the same time. But I think you have to make sure, you know, it's not, you're not boxing yourself in like Todd mentioned to me. So that was, that was a big one for sure. Um, and there's so much advice. <laughs> it's like, you know, um, that one definitely sticks out from right away, but there's, there's, there's tons of other stuff as well. So. What uh, what is your greatest failure in professional wrestling, and what did you learn from it? That's a, that's a tough one. Um, I feel like in a lot of ways, um, if I think for most people, I, it's inside or outside of the ropes. I think um, inside, I think we've all had the moment where we didn't count three when it was time to count three. Um, <laughs> uh, and I've had, had a couple of those. And, um, and I think what you learn from that is that, uh, you know, in one case, you, you have to make sure you're communicating with your guys uh, and girls, just, you know, making sure you're really talking with them uh, and knowing that, hey, you know, is this the finish? And if things are breaking down and things are going to be changed up a little bit more, whether it's time constraints, injury, whatever it might have been. And in two, it happened to me twice very early in my career and then a little bit later on um, due to those things, injury and then time. Um, and I think uh, that was that was a big lesson learned. And then one thing it was I kind of where I kind of felt like I failed was um, and Jesse was there for this uh, was the first show of the collective in Tampa this year, this week, uh, this year uh, of, of that week, um, because Chris Levin was at IWTV stuff. So I was the senior official uh, for those shows. And um, I didn't, I, I don't want to say I didn't think much. Of, I was very much like super honored, excited, but I thought, okay, I'll help with the assignments. Things break down. It goes to me, um, but everything will be fine. It won't be, you know, it won't be too much of an issue. And I knew that Chris dealt with a little bit, but I'm always there to help him. And the first two shows were rough <laughs> and um, we were dealing with the, Ooh. we were dealing with the Florida heat. We had an injury. There's no preparing for the Florida. Yeah, we, we, and we're outside. We had an injury in the first match. Um, we had a gentleman who, I think, another in incident, which was injury or was it heat exhaustion? We weren't quite it was, sure. It was, it was both. Yeah, probably both. And then the, um, the other thing was that on, then the next match on deck, uh, there was not a referee ready because we had another guy who was still tending to the first injury. But that match ended sh a lot shorter than I expected. And I just looked at myself and I'm just like, man, you, you know, you should have been doing a, a better you know, job at this. And, and I'm very hard on myself in, in, in a lot of ways, just in general. And I've always found myself kind of like a natural born leader in my life, um, been in leadership positions, but wrestling, I kind of liked that. I was just the ref, you know, not honestly just the ref. I hate, hate saying that, but I was, here I am, I'm the referee. I'm going to help by being a supportive figure, whether it's, setting up the ring, whether it's setting up chairs, whatever the promoter may need, whatever the boys may need. And then I ref my match. I do my thing and I go home. I don't have to worry about the, the other parts of it. Being a senior official and, and everything else, it was very much more than that. And I think I, I realized it quite quickly. And then by the end of the week, I mean, it was the, the probably the best week I've ever had as an official by the end of that week, but it started very rough for me. And I definitely felt like a failure those first two shows. I definitely was disappointed in myself. Um, but fortunately, I think given we had great refs down there um, and I learned from it, I think in, in a big way. And then I've actually had some uh, some individuals that I haven't worked directly with that I've seen recently, um, some, some wrestlers, one being a younger one in Ring of Honor, who saw me and our past don't really cross. And he said, hey, man, I've been hearing a lot of really great things about you in terms of being a leader and uh, on the independence and like helping out. And I'm like, that meant the world to me to hear that. Um, and I think um, it's good to be hard on yourself. Cause if you're not, 
and you're thinking, you know, your shit doesn't stink, then that's that's not a good way to go about it. But I think that was a nice wake up call for me to kind of maybe realize, hey man, we got to make sure when we're in that position, we're on our toes and we're thinking of everything. Not that I wasn't, but sometimes it's just, that's what happens. So, um, and Je thank God Jesse came early that day because with his medical background and his, uh, he was a great help. And that was a great thing of having guys just pick you up and support you, um, you know, and, and, we, and we got through it and, and it ended up being a good week. And then by the end of that week, I very much felt more of a prepared leader than just the first week and it's not even a week what it's like three days but it feels like a week. <laughs> right yeah it feels <laughs> yeah. like a, a lifetime uh, you, know? It, it, yeah. you know and it's it's and it's often like painful while you get through like you can only imagine the workers i mean those guys guys and girls wrestling the amount of matches they do on different shows and the stress of getting to and from um but i mean just like you know Physically, you're, you're sore. Mentally, you're drained. Emotionally, you're, you're drained. And then by the end of it, though, you're like, that was actually pretty fun, though. <laughs> so, you know, when it's all said and done. You, you I get, can't wait to do it again. Yeah, yeah. You get to the other <laughs> side. You're like, you get to the other side. You're like, ah, that's why we do this. And, you know, um, so. The, uh, the peanut butter and jelly really helped. Yes. Yeah. That was when I finally did feel like a leader. When I, so by the last day, I said, oh, yeah, I have all this peanut butter and jelly. And that was that was clutch. That made a huge difference for a lot of people. So, so, so you brought it up. Oh we're gonna, we're, we're going to talk about it, Adam. Hold up. Wait a second. Now we're getting down to something here. Yeah. You said peanut butter, so I got to know. Chunky or regular? So I actually dabble with both. I can actually Ooh. grab. I can oh. grab two containers oh. right now that I'd show you that I have both. Um, but if if I have to pick, I'm going creamy. If I have to pick. Creamy. Easily, I'll go yeah. creamy, but I, I will buy, you know, every once in a while, I'll buy both and, and, you know, kind of mix it up a little bit. Going to diversify cream, your peanut butter. Out, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the <laughs> diversification of the peanut butter. Yes. How about you, Jesse? Uh, definitely a smooth peanut butter guy. He's smooth. Smooth operator. Yeah. You know, as long as there's jelly added, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, I diversify. So you, do you not like peanut butter on its own then? You need jelly all the time? Or? Um, I I prefer just a good old-fashioned peanut butter jelly. I'm not one of those, I can't just like put the spoon in the jar and just, okay. I can't do that. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, I, I can't can do, do that. that I'm just, yeah. I'm weird like that. I love, I'm, I'm like weird that. in general. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But peanut butter is great. Chocolate and peanut butter is great. So, oh, yeah. Getting a spoonful of peanut butter and taking an Oreo and dipping it in it. That's good so, stuff. So I say I can't do like the spoon in the jar. Uh, and I am I am absolutely putting myself at risk of like a frying pan to the head. But my girlfriend, uh, she is one of those that like you just throw the jar of Nutella at her and, and the spoon just comes out of nowhere, man. Yeah. It, it's on like Donkey Kong. So, I never really you know. got into Nutella. And that <laughs> one, I, I don't I think it's good, but I just I never bought it a whole lot on my on my own. So but I know that it's, it's decent. Yeah. It's I never decent. did not like that. <laughs> There's Jesse just cutting across. It's decent. Yeah. <laughs> the officer no. ring in. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not peanut butter, but it's decent. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Oh, I'm out of booze. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, it hurts to laugh. <laughs> We're breaking out the good stuff, boys. <laughs> uh, yeah, lucky you. Hey, it's hey, it's Friday. Yeah, that was that. I heard you guys usually record on Monday or Tuesday, but it's Friday. So it's yeah, it's, it's Friday. Friday. We're we're time. dancing. We're dancing to whatever music we get, you know. But uh, so you've had a you've had a bit of time in the business. I'm sure you've found yourself in a what the fuck scenario. So, Adam. If you could regale us with a story, I, I I love that is the best part of wrestling to me, is the stories that come with it. Yeah, the experiences. Um, Without um, incriminating anybody, shall we say? Uh, do you have a good a good road story? Uh, ooh. road stories, a little. I'm trying to think. I. I Road story is not as much. I'm trying to think, but there's, I definitely had, I'll tell a more recent one that would be a, a, a WTF moment from GCW where it was kind of like, 
how did I end up getting to do this job kind of thing? Um, <laughs> and, and so, and, cause yeah, you know, there's a lot in the ring with that, with deathmatch kind of stuff. Um, oh yeah. But uh, this was definitely, so, so this was a tournament survival weekend, uh, which was just uh, in May or June. Um, I don't know. It's all blended together, but it was recent. It was this summer. I was there. I had stripes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was a black polo even. So we had, um, so we're down in AC Atlantic city. So uh, the, the first day is tournament survival. And uh, so it's a death match tournament. And, you know, the fans kind of understand, especially GCW fans, because they are wild rabbit and they are loyal and they kind of, they buy in, they buy in. So they understand they may be, you know, in some danger given the, uh, the death match. I so, <laughs> yeah. So the, the, um, the one, uh, there was a female who her leg got uh, nicked by Ooh. a piece of glass. It was very small, not a big deal, but she was obviously shocked, upset if you're not used to that. So I just happened to be around and um, the ring announcer said, Hey, Adam, do we have some bandages? Whatever. I said, yeah, no problem. Ran in the back, came over to her, uh, you know, um, got some, uh, some, you know, cleaned it up. Everything was all good. So the next day, uh, a regular show for GCW terms, no longer the death match tournament, but the main event was a death match. And I'm right by uh, gorilla. And this was actually the, this was when, um, Matt Cardona attacked Gage. Uh, this was that match. So um, we were hanging by Gorilla for because we knew, you know, something big was happening. We didn't know all the details. They actually they didn't smart up a lot of people in the back on that, which was cool. And that's why I think it was also, I think it worked on so many levels. So, I mean, you could put the pieces together, but you'd have to, you know, really be paying attention. So anyways, I'm back there, but we're all by kind of hanging by Gorilla more so than we usually would. And all of a sudden... <laughs> Um, they bring back this uh, fan who is bleeding from his head and they go, where's Adam? And I'm like, I'm right here. And then they're like, can you take care of him? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Cause oh, you don't Lord. say no. <laughs> you don't say no. First. So I brought him in. Uh, I was able to bring him back into, uh, into the, uh, into the back. We, we bypassed the locker room to a little offshoot. Cause I didn't want him. In the, in the midst of the locker room, sat him down, talked through it. it was all good. Um, another referee was able to help me out. And um, we were getting him, you know, going to get, he, he wasn't too bad. It was just, but again, people aren't used to that, you know, you, you know, yeah. you, so we're like desensitized by it when you're ref and death matches and the amount of things that are going on. And I never liked that. Like I was blood made me squeamish when I was a little kid. Now I'm like, whatever. Um, so, so, he it's coming down there. He's with me. He's doing good. He's doing great. Um, and uh, I'm just talking through it. And then uh, we got uh, one of the wrestlers to come let me know if it need if it would need stitches or not. Just you know, one of the deathmatch guys because I wasn't really sure. And he's like, "No, that'll be fine. No, no worries." I'm like, "All right, cool. throw some Dude. super glue on it. He'll be fine. yeah, it'll be fine." <laughs> but right after he uh, let it reassured him of that, uh, our friend who was bleeding uh, passed out from shock. Uh, he went. Uh, like white is a ghost green gills and went out on me like that that was my w2f moment because i was just like oh no and then sure enough within like 30 seconds to a minute he was back with me and i'm like okay we're good and like so and he's just and so i think it was just a matter of that loss of blood <laughs> shock, boom. but i can't i wish someone could see and wrestler another referee while it happened looked at me and was like, and I looked at them. They didn't seem too worried. I was like, that's where you act like no time at all had been missed and he hadn't passed out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we're like, we're good. So um, we got his friends to come back because that point the show, and then his friends were with him and they were great. They were all great sport. Like all like four dudes having a great time in AC watching deathmatch wrestling. They were okay. We, um, we taped them up, cleaned them again, used the, you know, the um, antibacterial all throughout. He was cool. Um, uh, both uh, Nick, Nick, it was Nick Gage and Jimmy Lord was the match. They both came back and checked on the guy, apologized. Uh, you know, Nick Gage, he's super cool. Uh, Jimmy was great with him. So he was super, he was super pumped to meet them. Um, and he was all in good spirits. So we got through it. Uh, but that was a recent moment. It's like, man, and then it's just where you're at is you never know as a referee what's going to be asked of you. Um, and when you're hanging out by 
Arilla, you might be throwing a little, hey, we're going to help this guy out. So um, and I'm glad they're, they're doing okay. They actually checked uh, them when we were in AC uh, just last weekend. The guys, they, they were out there and they saw me. They're like, hey, and I, I caught up with them real quick. They're like, yeah, everything's fine. Just a little, you know, it healed up, no problem. And we're all good. So, uh, yeah, that was that was a crazy moment. That was that was uh, definitely, definitely a crazy moment. Sometimes you do one thing uh, the first day and then the second day you're tasked with a little bit of a bigger thing. And as you as I mentioned earlier, that maybe like three months ago, I wouldn't have felt that I could do any of that. But you, you build yourself up from it. And 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 also referees, make sure you take uh, some some first aid and all that, because I've done that in the past. Uh, coaching amateur wrestling for seven years will also prepare you for a lot of those things. I, I, I wanted to touch on that. <laughs> you you brought up that you you coach uh, uh, wrestling. I have to ask because I, I am irreverent and uh, one of my favorite shows is South Park. How often have they shown you the clip from that episode? <laughs> well, That's I've not seen, yeah, real seen, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that episode. Uh, you know, obviously seen that episode. Appreciated on on both ends. Being a oh god, you know, pro wrestling fan and then uh, coaching it for seven years. But yeah, uh, my college friends definitely that aren't well, actually a lot of my college boys are wrestlers, but the ones that were not. They made fun of us with that episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love it. Just, just as, just as they should, you know. So, uh, um, we, uh, I'm looking at the time here, and uh, Jesse is playing hooky at uh, at work right now, so we have to be mindful of of that. Yes, we do. So, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna kind of put a bow on it here, but we're definitely gonna have to have you back because yeah. this has been a ball. But uh, before we go, uh, where can we find you on social media? Where can people keep up with you? Sure. So uh, Twitter uh, is the best way. I don't uh, tweet a ton, but uh, at ref Adam Galt, G-A-U-L-T um, on Twitter. And then the same handle on Instagram uh, at ref Adam Galt. Um, and uh, yeah, those are those are definitely the two of the best ways to uh, to see and follow what I'm up to. So perfect. Jesse, you've been uh, you've been fairly quiet this episode. Uh, I don't suppose that we could trouble you for some words of wisdom. As I turn on the the cane promo light because it's getting dark in here. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, we have we have two lights. I've got mark. white and I've got red. You I love it, Mark. <laughs> hey, it's cool. I like using it. Look, I can cut a cane promo now. Um, um, <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. As it is appropriate there that we are recording on a Friday. It is the weekend. Absolutely. It is the weekend. Please remember, do not add to the population. Do not subtract from the population. Do not be the reason why be the reason why we have a safe briefing on Monday. That is well, very, very appropriate on this Friday. Oh God, yes, isn't it though? So uh just to uh piggyback on what the first art said, uh this is the crew of Pop Goes the Zebra, along with Adam Galt. Uh, wishing everybody on Earth uh, a good night and have a pleasant evening. Everybody uh, be good. Jesse, uh, keep everybody safe. Lead officer. Elite. Thank that you. is the lead officer. <laughs>